Hey everybody, this is the intro, and in this tutorial, I just basically wanted to go over how we get Notepad++, which is a program that we're going to be using to download or um, to uh, actually write all of our HTML and CSS code inside of. So to get this program, all we're going to want to do is go to this page right here, notepadplusplus.org, and just type it in exactly like this, and then go down to download right here, click it will be brought to the second page and right on the second page just click this big green download button okay so once you get that done basically it'll just download and when it's done just click on it and it will run the program and install it for you but that's all I wanted to show you guys in this video uh, just how to get the IDE downloaded or the uh, text editor that we're going to be using to make our web pages so thank you for watching please like and subscribe and I'll see you on my next tutorial. Hey everybody, this is an intro, and in this tutorial we're going to be going over creating a web page. I mean, not creating a web page, but we're going to be going over adding paragraphs to a web page. So, what we're going to add is the paragraph tag, which is just simply a P. And, of course, we need the closing tag for it. And anything in between here is going to display on our web page as text in a paragraph all into all together uh, to create one element so we're just gonna put this as an example um, of a web page or a paragraph inside of here and then we're just gonna click our type control save and run it in our browser so there we go, we got the, this is an example of a paragraph outputted to our screen, and that's basically how you create a paragraph. So in the next video, we'll be going over how to add uh, different types of style to our tags, or our paragraph tags. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to create a web page. Uh, if you don't, I have tons of other videos on IT, so go check them out as well. Subscribe to my page, like and share it, and thank you for watching. Hey everybody, this is Intro. In our last tutorial, we talked about paragraphs. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about styling paragraphs. <clears throat> so besides CSS, there's another way to style in HTML. So we all we have to do is, to our elements, we can add the style tag, or the style command. You put an equal sign and a pair of quotations. Now, inside of here, we have tons of different commands that will go in here, but we're just going to go over a few simple ones. Uh, so the first one we can do is font family, which is a tag that allows us to actually give our text in here some type of uh, font uh, font type. So you can uh, declare a few font types, and the reason you want to declare more than one is if somebody who doesn't have, uh, say, their web browser doesn't support Cambria, they can um, their web browser will then say okay we have Arial instead and we'll display it as that so that's another good thing and all of our CSS tags that we put in HTML uh, must also have the semicolon to denote that we're done with that specific command so that's just one command we can add and the next one we'll just go over is font size now font size is uh, declared using uh, PT which declares the points that our text is or the size of it so that's the that's the value that it's given so 16 pt and then we can run this we'll go up here save it and we'll see the difference actually I already have it open so we'll see the difference in the text there we go so you see the text got bigger and it changed to Arial um, because this web browser Google Chrome does support that type of uh, font so it will change to Arial instead of Cambria so next we'll go back to our file and we're going to add another command so let's say um, actually another thing that we can do instead of saying um, declaring font family and uh, font size we can actually do that all in one command so we can use the font command and we can just say uh, 16 or I'll just put something different so it'll change the value when we go back to our web page 24 point um, Arial Cambria close that and we can change our font color by saying color 
and then entering a color a color value. So color values are um, given in different types of scenarios. So if you have a thing called Dreamweaver, it'll actually pop up with color values as you type in the hashtag element, which is the hashtag elements used to declare different types of colors. So that'll actually pop up, but in this it won't, so you just have to reference a, a guide on HTML colors, which isn't that hard to find. But we'll just put black, which is six zeros, and then a semicolon. So black text, 24 point, and this can all be, or the 24 point in the font family can be denoted within this one command. And then our second command, font color, which is completely separate, which is just uh, the color black for the text. We'll save it, we'll go back to our file, we'll refresh it, and there we go. We got black text. So we'll go back to our um, to our text editor and actually change the color to white just so that you can see um, that the colors do change. We'll go back and click control S to save it and there we go so the text disappeared because our background is in white so if I go over and highlight it you can see it but other than that you can't see it so so what we're gonna do is go back to our HTML file and that's basically a few commands that we can use within our style uh, command without going into CSS so that's basically how you style paragraphs there's tons of different commands um, that we'll be going over but this is just a basic uh, styling of it and if you check out the next tutorials we'll have uh, different different commands that can go in here and also be using uh, external CSS style sheets to enter these commands it's just so it looks a little cleaner in our HTML file so stay tuned please subscribe like the video and I'll see you next time Hey everybody, this is the intro, and in this tutorial, we, I wanted to go over um, just styling text using basic HTML tags. So, what we're going to do is just give our uh, text some style by um, using tags within HTML and not CSS. So, there's uh, tons of different things that we can do to this. Um, I'm just going to go over a few in this video, and we'll go go from there. So, as you know, there has to be opening and closing um, tags when we're creating uh, styles or HTML tags within our elements. So for the paragraph, we have our opening tag and our closing tag. For our body, we have our opening tag and our closing tag. And the difference between the two is we have this forward slash that denotes our closing. And within our opening, we don't have that forward slash. So we need them opening and closing tags when we're using these different types of styles that we put into our HTML file. So the first one we're going to do is italics. So italics is just the I tag. And we open and close our styles depending on where we want them to start and where we want them to end. So for example, if I want italics to be this whole paragraph, I can do that just by uh, simply declaring the I tag and then running this in Chrome or whatever browser that you want to use. So we're going to run this in Chrome and as you can see we have this is an example of a paragraph so that's very easy to um, understand um, just using the italics but we're going to go back to our HTML file and say we didn't want the whole thing to be in italics we just go say we just wanted the first two words to be in italics we do the same thing we just open and close it in a different place so wherever you want your tags to open and close or your um, to start and end is where you place them so we go back refresh it and as you can see this is is in italics and the rest of it is in normal aerial text so we'll go back to our text editor and we can display a whole bunch of these opening and closing tags now for that we have um, we have the italics of course and then we can use actually a thing called mark which will create um, a highlighted text Oops. and so this mark will create highlighted text we can go ahead and save it and refresh the page and as you can see the text highlighted 
the text is highlighted and back to our text editor we'll go over a few more tags so the next tags that we're gonna go over the bold uh, the bold uh, tag so we have B which will signify bold B opening and closing again and actually I'll delete these ones just to reduce the complication sorta so bold would make an bold and we'll go ahead and save that and I'm not gonna run it every time in the browser but you get the gist of it so B will make the an or the an in the middle of our oops, in the middle of our sentence bold text then we have small so simply by saying small opening that and closing it somewhere that will make our text small and of course we have a uh, big also so big open that and close that uh, we have a thing called superscripting and subscripting so say we had a math function um, or not a math function but some just math statement so we wanted four squared so we could do um, four and then we could just put uh, superscript and then a two and then end our superscript and that would make that superscripted so that the four or the two was in a small form above the uh, four so we'll go ahead and save it and run this and see how everything turned out so run it and there we go so this is an example of a paragraph and as you can see um, we'll Min or I can minimize this so we can see both so we have our uh, superscripted 4 so 4 superscripted with a 2 so 4 squared and we can also do subscripting which is uh, the complete opposite so if we had it like this with a subscript and we go ahead and save that again and go back to our Google Chrome refresh it and this would be a subscript and as you can see our an is bold our example is small and our of is big and everything coincides with one another so that's a few tags that we can use um, besides that um, we went over the highlighting which is mark we can also use a tag called delete so if I didn't want this last uh, line right here if I didn't want paragraph in my uh, sentence I can use delete or del the del tag and cover that and whatever we want deleted out of the paragraph save it go back to our browser and we can see or okay so we can see that it put a line straight through this word right here and this could use obviously be used for uh, different types of styling so basically it's all I wanted to go over in these tutorials or in this tutorial are just the tags that we can use within HTML to um, have all the different uh, styling functions and of course there's tons of different uh, styling functions in CSS and um, that's basically not what HTML is for. HTML is just to create elements um, just so you can style them within CSS so we'll be going over that later this was just a uh, quick uh, overview of all the tags in HTML that you can use to do a little bit of styling so thank you guys for watching please like subscribe and watch the rest of the playlist to learn how to create a web page so thank you for watching and have a good day hey everybody this is the intro and in this tutorial what I want to go over is links so we can create links within HTML that point to some destination that's a hypertext transfer protocol or any web page on the internet. We can also use it to um, call different HTML files that we have stored in our folder. So what we'll first do is just add a tag. We're going to add the less than sign and a tag called A or a command called A. And then after that we're going to use href which stands for hyperlink, hyperlink reference. After that put an equal sign, a parenthesis, and then a greater than sign. 
So inside these parentheses, we're just going to enter the name of the website that we want to point to. So let's just say google.com. And then after this, we enter this greater than sign right here. And after the greater than sign, we enter the text that we want to be dis want to uh, have displayed when the link is uh, on your web page. So when the link is on your web page, whatever you enter right here will be what the user is going to click on to go to this link. Now, after this, we just want to close our A tag. Just as normal. And we're going to go up here and click Save. And then go to our um, web page. Refresh it. And there we go. So we get Google and our. Uh, web page and obviously you can see that it's blue and has a line under it indicating that it's a link and we can go ahead and click on it and what you see is that the web page is not found and that's because we had to enter the HTTPS a colon and two forward slashes to denote that we are going to google.com so do this and it's also good to go in here and um, along with the hyperlink uh, reference that we're going to use we're going to just put a so once you put HTTPS in here we're just going to go ahead and save this again go back to our web page refresh it or go back and there you go so as you can see we get google.com um, you just have to remember to always enter the hypertext transfer protocol and the S stands for the security in it so just remember that and that's how you link stuff to your web page thank you for watching please subscribe I have tons of other videos on HTML and programming and thank you for watching. Hey everybody, this is the Intro and this is Hurl. We're going to be going over how to add images to an HTML file and how to call them in CSS also. So what we're going to do, um, first to create an image in HTML is just type in the IMG tag. And then right after that we just type in the source and set that equal to a set of parentheses and close it off. So we need to actually add the closing tag before we end our image uh, tag so what we have is just one command inside our image tag which is the src or the source tag or command so what we use with this is we just type in the name of our uh, file or our um, our uh, picture that we want to grab so we have an image called example.jpg and that's just going to display on the screen and as you see here I don't have an image name that in my folder right now so it just gave me this corrupted file uh, symbol but if you had an image called example.jpg and it has to be in the same folder as your index.html uh, file and your CSS file um, well actually it just has to be in your HTML file uh, folder but they should all be in the same folder but so anyway once you have an image in your folder uh, you just name it and give it its file extension if you don't know how to use the file extension you just uh, right click on it go to properties at the bottom and it should say type of file with the file extension in parentheses um, so that's for any image just right click it go to properties and you should see it right there and that's basically how you call it image into HTML so next we go to CSS and we can do the same thing so say um, in CSS we can call an image to the screen by actually uh, having some type of object so we have to have an object to add the image into of course because we have the uh, CSS command CSS are, uh, commands are just attributes for objects or elements that are inside of HTML so to reference our whole screen we can use the aristocrat symbol or um, and to um, so we reference our whole screen and we can have this body of code with all these different uh, symbols, I mean all these different commands inside of it that are used to reference our whole HTML file using this symbol right here. So what we do 
inside of here is just type in background and we're going to type in image and then we just type in URL a pair of parentheses a semicolon in that command and inside the parentheses we enter two quotes with the name of the URL for the image so again we would just type in the URL for the image and since it's in our folder we just use example.jpg or whatever the name is and whatever the file extension is of that photo so then when we save this we'd go back to our HTML file and save this as well and we would have our image pop up exactly right here so that's how you do uh, call an image into HTML using CSS or call an image to a object in HTML using CSS now we're gonna go over one last command which is actually just the background command so what this does is we can use all of those operators within one uh, sentence or one line so we can say our background is going to have red where the picture isn't and then we can just declare that image again just like this so again right after the color just enter the file extension or the name in the file extension of that file uh, the most common ones uh, file extensions are of course JPG then we have PNG and we have uh, GIFs so find out your file extension and type that in and that's basically how we use backgrounds or call backgrounds into HTML so with that being said that's basically all I wanted to go over in this video um, well actually we can go over something really fast too so once we have a background image into our HTML file as you can see we have uh, for that command uh, the whole web page was turned red or this color where the image wasn't and since the image isn't on there it just turned our whole background red another way to change the background is we could just go ahead in here and delete this command really quick save it go back to our index file type in body bg color and set that equal to some color and then of course just in that command or that in that tag so we could just type in any color click save and what we'll get is a white color so FFF FFF or six F's is white so that's why you couldn't tell the difference so we'll go to black which is six zeros and click save and click up here and there we go so we get a black background and a black background color so that's basically all I wanted to go over in this video how to call images and how to change the background color of your screen and that's it so thank you guys for watching and please like subscribe and watch the rest of my videos hey everybody it's the intro and what we're going to be going over in this tutorial on html and css is separate style sheets so if you didn't know you can create separate style sheets within uh, html and css so that you don't have to have this style tag if you did have it on each one of your HTML pages so if you didn't know you could add this style tag and we could just create some type of paragraph or any type of element uh, navigation bar any element in our body and then we could just directly give it an IT ID tag and just call it something random and you know have some content inside this paragraph and then go up here in our style and actually just add our adjustments to it or our attributes to it in here so we could obviously just see here we'll type in color and give it a color value of red and close that out so we can have this in our uh, HTML file and that'll run on this perfectly as you can see so we have a paragraph and we gave it a font color of red so that's basically how you can um, use a style or use CSS within an HTML file which is good if you're 
um, just prototyping your web pages and you're not ready to upload them yet but when you're gonna upload them onto a web server or you're publishing your website make sure that you have separate files because that can cause huge problems and if it even if it doesn't it's really less redundant to just create a separate file so what we can do to create a separate file is just delete this style in here and what we need is this tag right here so we have to have some way of uh, referencing our style sheet once we have uh, declared it and created it what we want to do is go to our style and we'll just delete the content in here and you won't have this file obviously but you'll go to file and in the folder that your HTML file is in and if it's not in a folder uh, put it into some folder you're gonna wanna save any type of uh, of course you can name it anything it just has to be a .css file in that same exact folder and go back into Dreamweaver, click, click File, Open, navigate to that folder and open your CSS file. Once you have done that, you just want to check the name right here that you gave your CSS file and type it into this command. So we have a link, a relation that's equal to style sheet, and this will stay the same. And the only thing that will change is this href right here. So whatever you named, your CSS file goes inside these braces or these parentheses and that's basically how we link our CSS file so we can go ahead and we already deleted the style tags out of our HTML file and we can just directly um, directly call this MMID in our separate style sheet now so if we go ahead and save our HTML file and we go ahead and save our style sheet with nothing in it go back to our live code or our uh, website we can see that we just have this text from the paragraph we have no style to it now what we can do is go to our CSS file type in mm with the uh, pound sign to recognize that we are um, using an ID tag to reference this object in HTML and of course just do the same thing just give it a color of red and give it a font size of 45 points and we'll just give it a font family of two different fonts and we'll go ahead and save that and go back to our HTML file and as you can see the attributes take over as we entered it into our separate CSS file so just make sure that you have the CSS file prototyped within our HTML file so that your HTML file recognizes that this is the sheet or this is the file that will be used to style the elements within this whole HTML file. So that's how we use uh, separate style sheets and that's basically all I wanted, all I wanted to go over in this video. Um, I'll see you in my next videos. Please subscribe, hit the like button and uh, again check out my other videos. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Hey everybody, this is the intro, and in this video I just want to quickly go over how to section off your code. So if you didn't know, um, when you're making headers and footers in HTML, there's actually just a quick tag that's used to uh, section them off. So the first tag is going to just be header, and of course we need a closing tag, and then footer, and then a closing tag for footer. And now the purpose of these is so that you can keep all of your information for your headers and your footers separated and also give these uh, IDs as well as uh, st or class names so that you can then style them within CSS. So they're very useful when aligning also. So say you have a header and you have all of your contents in here. Um, it's very easy to just go in here, add an ID and specify your alignment attributes straight to this element uh, header so that's a reason that you want to use these two tags the header opening and closing tag and the footer opening and closing tag to section off your headers and your footer and of course everything in between here would be just the rest of your web page and um, if you haven't seen my video on dividers I'd go check that out because that's another great way to section off your code but other than that, that's all I wanted to show you guys for today. Thank you, and please subscribe, and have a good day. Hey everybody, this is the intro, and in this video, I wanted to go over background color and changing your background. 
So for HTML, it's simple. You just want to go ahead and type in the left hand sign and type in body bg color is equal to a set of parentheses and then close that command. And inside the uh, set of parentheses, you're just going to want to enter the HTML color that you want. And of course, these are entered in uh, hexadecimal, but for now, I'm just going to type in something regular. Of course, when you use a web host and you upload your website online, you always want to use the correct format of colors. So just remember that. But for now, we're just going to show. I'm just going to show you what this will uh, what this will do to your web page. So we're going to go ahead and con click Control S, save it, go to our web page, and there we go. Refresh it, and we get a clear red background. Now, of course, I could just change this value to yellow. Save it again, go back, and if you know the CSS colors, um, you could just type in a CSS color, or I mean an HTML color, and you would get that color too. So, any value is acceptable, but using these uh, type of colors, the hexadecimal colors, is really important when your web page is online. So. That's all I wanted to show. Oh, actually, one more thing we're going to go over is how to add color to elements. So, sounds pretty simple. It is pretty simple. So, we're, we're just going to have a divider, and it's going to be called divider1, or just div1, and close out the divider. And if you don't know what a divider is, it's just a section that we use in HTML to actually section off a piece of code so I can have anything within this content and use this ID tag in CSS to style the content so what we're gonna put inside of here is um, just another quick list actually so we can just say create a few things on here actually get it done a little faster let's type in Example There we go. And so inside this <clears throat> inside this divider we have all these listed items and when we're gonna go over to our well actually we'll save this control S go to our style sheet type in div one to reference the ID that we created and make a body for it. Uh, save it and actually before we do that we're gonna make sure that we have the um, capitalization correct for the ID tag so no uppercase in that and we're just gonna give it a few properties I know I was gonna show you the background but I'm just gonna give it a border of one pixel solid well actually yeah just solid black and to change the background color what we're just gonna do is change the background color by typing in background the minus sign color and then we can use the same color that we have right now which is just red and to give emphasis to that we're going to actually just go we'll save this go back to our index and change the body background color so that it stands out so set the ready background color to so since we have our border as black and our background color of the element as red um, I'm going to make sure the color of the text is uh, white so that it will show up perfectly on the screen close that out save it and we'll go back to our background color for the actual web page and we'll just leave that we could just leave it as default but just to show you we'll set it as FFF and it's six F's that denotes white six or six zeros that denote uh, black um, FF zero 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 is red and so on and so on I'll leave a reference somewhere where you can go and check the colors but we'll go ahead and save both of these and run it in our web page so there you go. We have our divided, our divide. <coughs> sorry, we have the divider, which gives us this black background or black border, 
uh, around that divider which we used in CSS as you can see so for a div one we have a border of one pixel solid black so we got the one pixel solid black and the background color of that element is red and then the color of the text is white so that it's visible and when we go back to our index at HTML we can see that the listed items show up perfectly and all in a line with that divider so that's basically how you add background color and a few more things about how styling backgrounds and uh, choosing your colors works in HTML and CSS so thank you for watching please subscribe and please check out the rest of my videos and I'll see you next time Hey everybody, this is the intro. In the last tutorial we went over uh, ID tags or ID commands that we could put into object tags in HTML. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is exactly similar to that. It just has a little bit different syntax. So what we'll do is uh, using the same paragraph I made in the last uh, tutorial, we'll just type in class and then set that equal to a name just as we did the ID so we'll go to class we'll just type in um, new class and save that and for new class this is all you or for creating class this is all you do so we're gonna wanna take this name and go to our style sheet and those attributes that we gave our ID tag in the last tutorial we're going to give to this class now so we have in class okay so it's getting sort of confusing named it new class so I'm just gonna name it uh, ABC so class ABC and we'll go back to here and type in ABC so we'll save our HTML file since our class has a name to it go back to our CSS file and what we need to pull up a class or actually um, tell CSS that we are giving these attributes to a class is use a dot so just a p regular period denotes that we are pointing to some class and that class has this body of attributes so basically that's all we do for classes just like ID tags just instead of using the number symbol we use this dot so that's basically it you just uh, make sure you have all this in right and again you can name it anything you want we're gonna go to run run it in Chrome and there you go so the exact same I know this is spelled wrong but the exact same thing that uh, popped up and our ID tutorial popped up here and again we could go back through and change these to whatever we wanted to change them to but for now that's basically all I wanted to show you guys so that's how you use classes thank you guys for watching please subscribe like share and I'll see you on my next tutorials thank you hey everybody this is the intro in this tutorial we're gonna be going over adding uh, divider tags to our HTML file in order to have uh, to have um, a referencing object in CSS uh, we can create these dividers and put all of our HTML or a certain set of HTML commands within it and then in CSS use that divider tag to reference it and then begin to give it our properties or the attributes. So what we're going to do is create a divider ID and we're going to give it some arbitrary value. You can name it anything you want. We're just going to call it uh, example div and create a closing for it so again anything with that inside this divider can be referenced through the example divider ID tag in CSS so we'll go to CSS create our um, create our variable or not our variable but our um, our code body for this divider tag and if you didn't know you reference uh, ID tags using the hashtag symbol and we uh, referenced classes using the dot so what we'll do is just put the hashtag back up there and we're going to just give this divider a border of one pixel solid and we'll just give it a color of red and close that out and we'll save this file using control s 
I'm going to go back to our page. So as you can see, there's nothing in here yet. It's because we have nothing inside of our divider or our body. So what we're going to type in is just a simple table. Not, not like a huge complicated table, just a really quick uh, table so we can go over these examples. So I'm going to create two table rows and they're both going to store uh, two sets of uh, data. So, okay, so after we create these two sets of data, we're just going to give them some values in there so that we can get something to show up on the screen. And what we'll say is just first name and last name. And then down here, we'll just enter uh, the name. So we'll just put... Uh, some random name in here and once we put the name in there as obviously you can see uh, for our table row we have our first row with our table data for first name and last name and our second row with uh, the first name John right under the first name tag of here and our last name Doe under the last name tag of here so say we wanted to get this into a um, into a separate uh, type of styling so that we can see that there is different fields here for the table so what we can do is use our divider tag or actually since we have our divider tag already entered in here what we're gonna do is reference this TD tag uh, basically just uh, straight off in CSS so what we can do to give the TD tag a border instead of going in here and typing in uh, style is equal to uh, quotations, border, and then type in all these commands into each um, tag in CSS, or not CSS, but HTML. We can go in CSS and we can just reference that table data section or every table data section to have a, a, some type of border to it. So what we're going to do is go into our CSS file and type in TD and a body again. And what we'll do is just give it that same exact command that we created up top so border one pixels solid red okay so once we have that saved we can go back to our index file and see the change in the sheet so as you can see here we have our border around the whole divider tag which we can see is right here and we have our border around each table data set so that's basically how you add dividers and use a little bit of styling to um, style a table or any other element so again we could have used a paragraph in here or anything within here so as you can see I can just delete all that create some random paragraph and again it will have all of these values that we just uh, specified in our CSS so since there wasn't any table data, this value wasn't called, so we can delete that. But as you can see in the example divider tag, or anything within this divider, it has this attribute to it. So that's how you use dividers, and that's all I wanted to show you guys in this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and check out the rest of my videos.